Thank you, Dr. Samar. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My presentation will be about the characteristic of inflammatory back pain. And the aim of my presentation is to raise the awareness about axial spondyloarthritis as a cause of a chronic back pain, particularly in young adults, and facilitate the timely referral of patients who may have axial spondyloarthritis for evaluation in a rheumatology clinic. As you know, back pain is a common problem in affecting 80 to 85 percent of people at some point uh, at some point during their lifetime. It is the second leading symptom for a visit to primary health care, and approximately about 20 percent of people between 20 to 59 years of age have a chronic low back pain, and the prevalence will increase with age. When important but under-recognized cause of chronic low back pain is axial spondyloarthritis. Axial spondyloarthritis is an inflammatory rheumatic disease involves the spine and sacroiliac joints, and it is associated with characteristic pattern of back pain referred as inflammatory back pain. All of you from the medical school knows ankylosing spondyloarthritis, which is the broad type of seronegative arthritis or spondyloarthritis disease, which affect the axial spine and sacroiliac joints. It occurs in patients who are less than 45 years and peak at the age of 30. And the chronic inflammation of the sacroiliac joints and the spine will lead to back pain and the stiffness. Over the times, there will be newborn formation, structural damage, and effusion of the sacroiliac joint with the axial spine, giving the characteristic pattern of bamboo spine. Over the past few decades, our knowledge about disease has changed. Now we call this group as spondyloarthritis diseases, and based on the predominant manifestations, they are divided into two groups, axial spondyloarthritis and peripheral spondyloarthritis. Under the axial spondyloarthritis, we have two subgroups. Patients who present with symptoms of axial spondyloarthritis and have obvious damage for the sacroiliac joints in the plain X-ray. We call them radiographic axial spondyloarthritis, same as ankylosing spondyloarthritis. Those who are having symptoms of axial spondyloarthritis without uh, obvious damage in the sacroiliac joints, we uh, classify them as having non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis. The, there are other diseases like psoriatic arthritis, reactive arthritis, arthritis associated with inflammatory bowel disease, and undifferentiated peripheral spondyloarthritis, mainly their representation with peripheral joints involvement. There is overlap between these two groups, and that's why we look at them as interrelated one disease. Patients who do not have uh, evidence of sacroiliitis in the, axial, uh, in the plain X-ray, they have the manifestation of inflammation in the MRI. And not all patients with non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis will transform to radiographic axial spondyloarthritis. Those at risk include male, young in age, who present with back pain and they have high inflammatory markers in, uh, and positive for HLA-B27, they, and they have 
high inflammatory evidence on MRI, smoker with uveitis, but do not have evidence of peripheral joints involvement are at risk to transform to uh, radiographic spondyloarthritis or ankylosing spondyloarthritis. Around 10% will evolve to radiographic axillary spondyloarthritis over two years, and this percentage will increase to 30% over 10 years. From the practical point of view, we look at these two groups as a spectrum. One can transform to the other. And they are one single disease because they have similar clinical picture and the response to treatment. And the natural history of this disease is shown in this slide like a river. The river it has a branch and the flow of water can be sometimes strong and it can the, the flow be slowed down. So some patients from the beginning, they have severe disease and they will develop axial spondular arthritis. Some will have the symptoms without the radiographic damage. We call them non-radiographic. Some patients, they will start with back pain and spontaneously they will go into remission. Some, they will continue over the years, have on and off disease. And this is, this is what creates a challenge for the diagnosis of this disease, even for us as a rheumatologist. The burden of axial spa and regarding to quality health of life, uh, employment, limitations, and uh, cost of uh, treatment is similar to rheumatoid arthritis. And unfortunately, this, this patient, they will not get full uh, employment uh, time. Uh, worldwide, the prevalence of axial spondyloarthritis is 1.5%, and for ankylosing spondyloarthritis is 0.55. Ankylosing spondyloarthritis is more common in men, but non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis equal in both men and women. First degree relatives of patients with axial uh, spondyloarthritis have 5.6 to 16 fold higher risk of development of axial spondyloarthritis. Therefore, family history is very important to obtain when you encounter with a patient, with a young patient with a chronic back pain. And uh, these uh, diseases are highly associated with HLA-B27. Around 85 to 95% of patients with ankyl spondylitis, they, have, they are positive for HLA-B27. The distribution of HLA-B27 depends on the ethnicity. It's more common in white, but those who have positive HLA-B27, they are at risk of having axillary spongular arthritis in the range between 2 to 10 percent. So this test is highly sensitive, but moderately is specific. Negativity for HLA-B27 will not rule out axillary spongular arthritis. In general, Arab people, they have low prevalence of HLA-B27, including Saudis. That's why we depend on the symptoms and other tools for diagnosing of uh, axial spondyloarthritis. The hallmark feature of axial spondyloarthritis is inflammatory back pain, which is characterized by insidious onset of a chronic back pain more than three months before the age of 40 to 45 years, wakening up the patient in the second half of the night due to back pain. Improve with physical activity, but not with rest, and associated with morning stiffness that persists 
for more than 30 minutes, and it has good response to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. The features of inflammatory back pain are seated in a criteria, and these criteria are changed over the years, and the latest one provided by the society who deals with ankylosing spondyloarthritis require the presence of four out of the clinical features to say that inflammatory back pain is a present. If these features are present, means that the patient is having inflammatory back pain. With using these features, you can increase the, uh, the, probability, the probability of diagnosing axial spondyloarthritis by threefold in the primary healthcare uh, setting. And basically, this uh, criteria was created to differentiate between the uncommon cause of back pain, which is an inflammatory back pain that occurs in 5% of people, to the common cause of back pain, which is the mechanical back pain, which can affect more than 90% of people. And all of you knows what are the causes of mechanical back pain. Mechanical back pain can result from a trauma, prolonged sitting in abnormal position, and other. Mechanical back pain is different from inflammatory back pain in the form of the onset is, uh, can be variable, can be acute or chronic. It's not associated with the prolonged stiffness. It can occur at any time. It worsens uh, by exercise and can the, the, the duration we said it's acute means list can occur in, 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 within less than six weeks and any age can be affected with mechanical pain and has variable response to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug opposite to patients with axial spondyloarthritis. The other common feature for axial spondyloarthritis include peripheral arthritis, where the common joints involved are the lower, the lower extremities, joints like knees, ankles, and hips. The presentation will be in asymmetrical way, and usually two to four joints will be involved. The other features of uh, axial spongular arthritis is enthusiastics, which means inflammation at the, at the, the tendons and ligaments at the site of bone, and this will present with pain and tenderness during examination, and the common site of involvement is Achilles tendon and in the, uh, uh, blunt, in the, at the site of attachment of a plantar fascia at the calcaneum. And you know we have hundreds of uh, um, uh, muscles so, uh, in the body, so any site can be involved and this will lead to the pain. Other manifestation which occur in, in around 6% of patients is dactylitis, which refer to swelling of the whole finger or toe as a result of inflammation of the tendons and the joints. The most common extra-articular manifestation of axial spa is acute anterior uveitis, which occur as acute pain and uh, with red eye, and sometimes may disturb the vision, and can be bilateral or unilateral. It can subside by itself, but commonly it subsides with the steroid. And this patient, they will go to ophthalmologist, he will not ask them about back pain, and that may be just uh, diagnosed as uveitis, and the patient will uh, continue carrying the diagnosis of, u of uveitis. The other manifestation is the presence of inflammatory bowel disease, whether the patient symptomatic, like having crows or ulcerative colitis, but 50% 
of patients with axial spa, they can have microscopic uh, colitis. The dermatological manifestation of axial spa is in the form of psoriasis, which you have to look for these regions in the, spa, in the scalp and other uh, areas. Is there any sex difference between the presentation of non-radiographic or axial spondyloarthritis? Yes, male tends to have axial spondyloarthritis, while female tends to have non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis. Unfortunately, this disease is well presented in female. And because the, the spine is not involved like in male, and this female will, will be missed easily because these patients, they will complain of a lot of pain and they will be diagnosed like uh, fibromyalgia, and uh, this will affect their quality of life. They will have depression, they will have a lot of complain. And these patients, they will have more enthesitis and peripheral manifestations. If these diseases are left untreated, they, it will be associated with a lot of comorbidities, including involvement of the heart in the form of an inflammation of aortic root and aortic valve. Patients, they might have heart failure, hypertension. Also, they are more susceptible to get uh, metabolic uh, syndrome, and they have depression. Lung is well known to be affected in the form of apical fibrosis. Patients will have restrictive pulmonary disease, and they can have osteoporosis and the fracture as a result of uh, immobility. And neurological manifestation also occur in particular code equine syndrome and atlantoaxial subluxation. And rarely these patients, they will be develop renal disease in the form of renal amyloidosis. Like any disease, we have to put in our mind differential diagnosis, and uh, as the, at the same time, we have to exclude red flag disease like uh, malignancy. The diagnosis of axial spondular arthritis is mainly clinical judgment history and physical examination for the whatever mentioned uh, previously. We don't have a specific diagnostic laboratory test in the form of antibodies like rheumatoid arthritis or SLE. The other tools which can help, up, help us in diagnosis, uh, CRB, but it's elevated only in 35 to 55%. HLAB 27, we talked about it previously. The most important tools is X-rays and MRI. X-rays will show us the damage which occur in the joint in the form of sclerosis, erosions, and finally ankylosis of the joints. And MRI will delineate for us the presence of inflammation in the form of edema, like the white spot you see. And uh, it is uh, very important to diagnose the patients who have non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis. Unfortunately, these diseases are easily missed, and there is delay between symptom onset and diagnosis of axial spondyloarthritis reaching up to 14 years. And one of the factors regarding the delay of the diagnosis is the lack of awareness about this disease. Timely referral of patients with an inflammatory back pain to rheumatologists is essential for early diagnosis of axial spa to allow early treatment aiming at reducing the disease burden and improving long-term prognosis. That's why we have strategies for referral all patients who have a chronic back pain at young age. Please refer patients with inflammatory back pain, whether they have positive HLA-B27 or negative uh, X-ray for the sacroiliac joints 
to rheumatologists. We have also referral pathway for patients, uh, in, for patients in Saudi Arabia. It is similar to the previous one. And meanwhile, while we are waiting the acceptance of patients by rheumatologists, please educate the patient about the disease, send him for exercise and physiotherapy, and start him with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. If there is no contraindication, at least you can use two or three with, for three months, and uh, the rheumatologist will do the big job for these patients. So in conclusion, detailed history and the clinical evaluation are key in differentiating inflammatory back pain from mechanical etiology, screen for extra axial manifestation that may increase likelihood of spondyloarthritis in young patients with chronic back pain, first line Imaging is X-ray of the sacroiliac joints and full dose of non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory drug with the exercise program can be tried while waiting for rheumatologist acceptance. And thank you very much.